Taking orders from the set brain. Listen what the set saying. I will kill without a call. Death before the sound of your niggas go. Now ask is that your nigga or a snake in disguise? If that nigga give advice, that'll lead to your demise. With some questions. Save Bari, protect Bari at all costs. We have to, bro. Like I was saying, man, we we say so That's much shit, deep. like. Like, you know, you stand for something or fall for anything. And when we have our athletes that actually do that or ex- 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 exert that meme, so to speak, on and use their platform, we turn mm-hmm. into we turn into the, the very people we despise and we say worse shit than shut up and dribble. The shit that I'll be reading, the comments, yo, people That's are sick. And mind you, I'm like, yo, y'all, y'all come in as fans. Take a step back and remember he's a human being, bro, first. He's a person first. And then black people specifically, I'll be like, yo, come on, bro. We such hypocrites. And like I said, the people we despise, right? And I despise people that we know take a major part, play a major part in our oppression as a people, you know what I'm saying? The conservatives, so to speak, they just one faction of it, but then, you know what I'm saying? You have you have those type of, we take on those type of idealistic ideas and beliefs. And I, and, I, and I say that to say, when we do shit or when we have attitudes like that towards somebody like a Kyrie taking a stand, you know what I'm saying? We like, oh, it's Absolutely. a way to do it. You know what I mean? Because it's a way to do it. You can do it, but you shouldn't do it's it. Always, it's always a specific way, right? Yeah, bro, that there's shit. Always, no, no, there's no. always a clean way we're supposed bro, to do the something. conservative way gets us nowhere. And we got to understand that. That's why. The how about this? Part- we're, we're, natu- we're human beings, right? So sometimes when you're pushed and you're backed into a corner with something, you don't know necessarily the, what's right to do or what's wrong. You just know you just want to do something. And you just right. have to make some type of a stand at that particular moment. You know, whether it's right or whether it's wrong or whether we can reshape it later on down the line, we work on that. Like what they said about Ice Cube and how he went about it. A lot of people were more concerned with, you know, the timing of it, you know what I'm saying? And and why didn't he reach out to certain people? And, and you know, instead of just understanding that, this is a guy who was, you know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure he's very busy in his own right. And he just had a feeling. Right. And, and with his own feeling, he just, he, he made a move on it. He acted on it. You know what I'm saying? Now, whether or not he could do better the next time, that's a conversation to be later had. But to jump on somebody's back because you don't feel like at that particular moment, they didn't do it the way you think they should have did it. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? I think we, we do an injustice when we when we act like that. And we made it, our culture made it more of a big deal than it really was without even knowing the context of it. Like most people don't even know what, Ice Cube's plan for Black America is. They never read it, nothing. They, they never read it, nah. They were just he focused on how he came about it. Yeah. Right. It was just, the, <laughs> even how he came about <laughs> you know it, bro, Just the idea that he sat down and met with Trump. He sat down and went with Trump. Yeah, photo yeah, op. All of that took away everything. The photo op. Who does the photo op affect? If we are smart and strong up here, then that photo op doesn't mean shit to us. This is what right? I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? This is what I'm so saying. Damn, I'm like, yo, I had plenty of arguments with that, brother. You know what I mean, bro? And that and that's one of the things I posted a video on my Instagram the other day about Tiger Woods. I found the video of a 14 year old Tiger Woods. I don't know if you peeped it, and he was talking. Nah, about I didn't peep it. About to tap into that. See, I should have made you tap, tap into in. That. But um, copy it's all good. I was talking about how basically he was 14. He was, you know, he was doing this thing at that time, and he was saying how he was experiencing prejudice, prejudices, and racism frequent mm-hmm. in these um these these uh the the golf um the country clubs. You know the golf. Or most golf courses are at country clubs, and to be part of country club, you know you're part of that upper echelon, you're, and you're conservative. Right. Period. Like that's what you are for the most part. If you're part of that, right. or if you frequent those type of you know country clubs, and he was saying states specifically like Texas and Florida is where he experienced the most. And mm-hmm. then he started to talk about you know how he you know he basically he was dominating the sport at that time, and that um how he would you know being that he's black, he knows more important. You know what I'm saying? Like and how he would do use that to like you know for the for the you know the embedment of his people. And you know what I mean? And then they also, he was, he, like I said, during that time, bro, he was firm. You could tell he had a, at that time, he had a strong um, sense of self. You know what I mean? You could tell, like I said, right. he was black and said what he was going to, you know what I'm saying? What he planned on doing. At the mm-hmm. end of that video, they all, they also asked him if, um, who his heroes was. He mentioned, I think, Wayne Gretzky, Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson. You know what I mean? Talked about their competitiveness. You know what I mean? Right. I, I talked about that. So now you fast forward, you know what I mean? To, to 1997 when he was on Oprah Winfrey show. And he made that infamous statement about how it bothers him when people refer to him as African American. It's right after he won the Masters. Correct, I remember that. I remember I was a kid. and I remember seeing. That. I remember how it made me feel. Yeah, and I remember because you know, as a Tiger, you know, the first black golfer to win the Masters. You know what I mean? He didn't like being referred to he as. Didn't want to own it. He came up yeah. with a thing, Calabalasian, <laughs> some crazy shit. Calabalasian. You know what I'm saying? Some yeah. crazy. And it's crazy how. To see that bit, being older now, understanding everything, and going back as you know, and seeing that video as, as a reference to what he wanted up mm-hmm. coming, which was basically a black conservative. You know what I'm saying? To see how strong. So one, I feel like it was important, like I always say about instilling that knowledge itself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
self-love, that value, that empowerment. You know what I'm saying? Like we have a habit of labeling a strong black man as angry or, or you know what I'm saying? Or, or, or ignorant. And that's actually the complete opposite. The strong black man is sure of himself and he's not going to conform to ways that's going to mm-hmm. water down what he's trying to do. You know what I'm saying? So again, caliber Asian, all this other shit, he basically denounced black people on national TV that's and right after that, he had got a crazy Nike deal. He had endorsements before that, but his life changed after he won a match. After he got that he Nike endorsement, right? He said, because that endorsement comes after he said what he said about how he it bothered him. And it was like, damn, I'm like, yo, but when he was 14, you know what I mean, bro? He was so sure. It was a whole you know, different, was, yeah. And, thinking, and I'm objective that I'm older. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I, now I can go back and understand what he had to go through as a black kid in the predominantly white sport he was dominating, bro. Yeah, he'd probably be like, yo, if I do good, if I do good enough, no matter how I look, they're gonna respect me. So his, all his golf hair was probably was shitting on him. You know what I'm saying? The shit they were saying. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? When they want to, you had this guy who had this one of the masters a few years before, and he wound up being on a golf channel. They used to talk, call him boy, and all that. You know, I didn't, yeah. I don't remember this, but you now, know, you know what's back- crazy, bro? I think athletes are faced with a very, um, you know, a very compelling distinction when, when they, you know, especially the ones that started, the ones that are groundbreaking, you know, the Venus and Serena's, the Tiger Woods, right. um, even OJ, you know, back in the, you think right. about this, right? Tiger Woods said this in 97, OJ in 95 said, you know, I'm not back, I'm OJ, right? right. So, you know, and then I'm, I was reading this book, um, uh, what the hell is the name of it? I got this shit right here. It's uh, Stamp from the Beginning by Ibram Kendi, right? right? And pretty much, you know, it, it explains a lot how, you know, when, you got the extraordinary Negro, and that's the Negro that they look at that, you know, he's going to be the, he's the Tiger Woods. You know, they would consider Tiger Woods to be an extraordinary Negro in the, in, in the art of tennis. They would consider, you know, O.J. Simpson to be an extraordinary Negro playing football or whatever the case. And a lot of the times that separates you from being as good as the rest. You know what I'm saying? Because now they look at you like, okay, you're extraordinary for what you are. You know, you're extraordinary for an African-American. For an African-American, you're a great tennis player. Right. You kind of get faced with that distinction of whether or not you want to be viewed as a great tennis player or a great African-American tennis player. And a lot of these times when I feel like they're answering these questions, I feel like they're, um, you know, they're, they're losing touch with themselves. But I feel like it's, uh, you know, a, a lot of it has to do with the career and the path that they chose, man. And this is why I say sometimes, you know, getting on point a little bit, why we can't always, you know, idolize the celebrities because, what they had to go through and they and what they you know what their perception of certain things were, it's gonna differ from us being where we were at. You right. know what I'm saying? We sitting there, we in the hood, we growing up, and then we get into our our late teens and our twenties, and we're seeing things a totally different way. Meanwhile, you're on the green grass playing golf. You know what I'm saying? So it's like your perception of certain things is gonna be far different. And you know, as much as something like that hurts, you know, watching um that OJ documentary and, and seeing him say that, from, you know what I'm saying? Uh, as Cuba good in the actor and, and listening to Tiger Woods say that in 97, I understand there's like a two year gap between that time frame of that, right? So how much of how much of Tiger, you know, was watching OJ and saying, you know, hey, I don't want, I want to be viewed oh, the same way. Exactly. And I thought about that and you're right. So if I, I, and I mentioned in the, in the Instagram post, I'm like, if you go back to his video when he's 14, name some of his heroes, right? So now you go on, forget about Gretzky, he names Magic and Michael. And if you know anything about Magic and Michael during their prom, I mean, their prom of fame, they were not politically involved. They weren't, you know what I'm saying? They wasn't doing anything for their, solely for their people's progression. That wasn't what they was doing. They conformed again to conservative ways. You know what I'm saying? So look who he named as his hero. So now as he's going through things as an athlete, I'm not, I don't say, he, I'm not sure if he reached out to them, maybe he did. But even if he didn't, that's his reference point, right? And look what they did. They didn't never came out. So if, even if he was faced with questions, he's like, he could reference like, damn, Magic never said nothing. Michael, talk about, I'll make things for Republicans too. You know what I mean? These are the little references you have as your heroes, you know what I'm saying? And then yeah. when, when, you, um, when, you, when, you, when you conform, when you're in that type of entity, whether it's sports and entertainment, when you conform, you know what I'm saying? To conservatism, that's basically what it is. When you do, even when you're doing things, you do it a certain way. Or if you speak out, you speak out a certain way. Um, it's historically, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? It's provided rewards to individual blacks. You know what I'm saying? With few downsides, because we don't have us, the culture, we don't have any power to do anything about them. You know what I'm saying? What, what we're going to really say is nothing we can really say. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So the black conservatives, they, the people, like a, the athletes I mentioned, some of them, they form, like I said, into the conservative ways. And it's a bunch of them that do that. And, um, Clearly, we know, you know, it's for their personal advancement, right? Personal advancement above the welfare of the race. 
often for gain, significant, often for significant personal and financial benefits. So again, like I'm trying to, I'm reading an excerpt from this book, um, Black Labor, White Wealth. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you know what I mean? They, they, they'll conform if they're able to have access to that power, that money, you know what I'm saying? That, that, that everything that comes with being, you know what I mean? Basically conforming to their beliefs, you know what I mean? It, it, it essentially, it essentially feeds us that, you know what I mean? It essentially feeds, not us, I'm sorry, essentially feeds that cash cow system. Yeah. Well. Even when we have the token black guy, we can have him conform to our ways. So, and we'll make them, we'll make them the black hero. We'll, we'll control that narrative and make them a black hero. And what the black hero looks like is this, what they do is this, how they move is this. They don't speak out. They're not proud. They're not, you know what I'm saying? And so, mm-hmm. you know I mean, like, again, I so saw, I'm like, yo, the one, the one natural resource we do have, and I'm gonna call it natural resource, but as far as entertainment and, and being an athlete, we lack control. We, we lack ownership and control over it. So, yeah. again, so it's easy to you to conform. It's easy to make them conform to certain things. And the ones that don't conform, the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's, the Muhammad Ali's, they discredit mm-hmm. or they make crazy or they kill. You know what I'm saying? Like Billie yeah. Holiday, people don't even know about Billie Holiday. You know, people, they know she's a drug. Like, I don't know. Like, people know she was heavy on the drug, all that other shit. But only that came to the forefront, to the light, because uh, she was really the mainstay and star in the civil rights movement. People don't even talk. You know what I'm saying? People don't even talk about Billie Holiday the way they should. They talk about her as a drug addict. But that song, and I'm mad, I cannot remember the name of this song. I'm so upset with myself, boy. But this song was about <laughs> slavery. Um, this song was about slavery. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? And, and that song, like she she was she was one of the, the first that, you know what I mean, one of the first that was using her music to get her message across. You know what I'm saying? And what they did right. was discredit her and they fed her more drugs. You know, you know how you know how it go, bro. And that's what they tend to do uh-huh. with our leaders. You they either kill you or discredit you. You know what I'm saying? Anybody that yep. that's either speak up or speak out. In an unconservative way, especially if they have a backing, you know what I mean, if they have the matches, they got the air, they they going, you know what I'm saying, they going, that's what they're going to do. They going, they going to find out your weakness, and they going to manipulate it, ex- expose you, and feed it more to you. So if it's sex, drugs, and girls, they're going to always make sure there's an abundance of sex, drugs, and girls around you. <laughs> like, you know, yeah, what you I'm have saying? it. You know what I'm saying? And then, and then, like you said, like Kyrie is on that. You know, he's taking the stance of a Kareem, right? You know, Bill of a uh, Bill Russell. Right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, when you think back to the, um, I can't remember the exact Olympics. I think it was, was it 68? Yeah, I'm not sure yep. when um, yep. NBA players protested against it. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. I mean, the Olympics when you had um, um, and, Tommy. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And, and I forgot. Uh, Tommy, I can't remember the exact Tommy, names. I, I, I was going to say, if you, if you knew the names, yeah, if you knew the and names. Juan Carlos, like, baby, I know the names. Those are my guys supposed uh-huh. to get that started. I know who they were. Absolutely. You know, That's I, a fact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I wanted, yeah, I wanted, I wanted you to cite those brothers real quick. But like, you know, <laughs> Ty is, you know, he, he's taking that level of a stance right now, you know, and I think when, right right now, I don't want to say it's e- easy because by saying that, I would be downplaying some of the progression and some of the things that some of these athletes and some of these entertainers have done and use their platforms to do pushing forwards. But I feel like with social media nowadays, it's very, very, it's much easier than maybe it was some years back in the 90s, you know, for players to kind of express themselves, actors, entertainers to express themselves and kind of take a stance on certain political issues. But um, to take a physical stance is, 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 is different. You know what I'm saying? When I saw Jalen Brown out there actually in the trenches, you know, marching, right. I saw Russell Westbrook and and James Harden and certain people actually out there in the trenches marching. And when you think about the, what was going on in some of those areas and what they could have been subjected to if things had gotten out of hand while they were around, they were out there on the front line. I mean, Jason, Jalen Brown, pardon me, that he actually led one. Right. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't just, he didn't just show up. He actually organized and was out there. You know what I'm saying? So when I see stuff like that, when I see people really taking it to the forefront, that's a different, that's a different level. You that's know, we have a lot of our athletes, you know, we hear a lot of them. And they say great things. They make great stances. They they make great speeches. They they uh, you know, give great um sound bites when they're interviewed. And uh, but you know, in terms of seeing them out there in the actual field, we don't see that as much. And that's like I said, that's not to take away from what it is they do and what they can create with the power that they have using their platform. But when I see Kyrie doing it like this in this sense, he's pretty much, you know, he's forcing everybody to call it a distraction, but it's a distraction in a, in a positive way. You know what I'm saying? It's not really, it's not one of those distractions that you say, you know, he's a detriment. It's but like, if you look at him, like he's being a detriment, 
then you have to look at yourself in the mirror and actually, you know, what are you to the cause? You know what I'm saying? If Kyrie's a detriment to, to the situation, then what is it that, you, what are you, what are you? You know, what word would you use to describe yourself? Absolutely. And my thing is one with the whole Kyrie thing, I, like he's actually exerting power. It's one thing to lead them. And I'm not knocking anybody. It's one thing to lead the protest. It's one thing to, he's exerting, mm -hmm. he's showing us what exerting power looks like, right? All right, I may not have ownership in this, Right. But I do have the power to say I'm not going to play. And all they can do is find me. And being that they can find me, it's not going to hurt mm -hmm. me because my bread is long and I don't care that much about that fine. They're going to try to flip the script and they're going to do what they always going to discredit him in some way, shape or form. And it's so easy to manipulate and control a masses minds because, like I said, they're targeting us as fans first. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? They talk us as mm -hmm. fans first and we got to be more in tune as black folks. Like, yo, stop being so selfish and caught up in the bullshit and stop always being a fan. Like, look what this man is doing. Like I mentioned earlier, we post, repost and regurgitate memes like stand for, you know, stand for something or fall for anything. And then we have somebody actually showing you what that looks like. Even when he mm -hmm. said, when they had the media came out and said, we get, Kyrie said, oh, we can start our own NBA. And they was like, that's false. He didn't say that. Whatever the case may be, the truth of the matter is, it's right. factual. It's factual. They have enough money and enough. It's just as far as what it takes to start it up. Like they always could, they always paint this narrative like the like the NBA saved the ABA. The ABA was going out of business, but that ABA saved the NBA. Cut the shit. All the fun, all the athletes, all the studs was the in NBA. The yeah. You know, like <laughs> Julius Irving, like, like come on, yeah. bro. It's like we gave up our control of ownership and, and like i said i don't know the the whole backstory and i'm pretty sure it had a lot to do with just the funding you know the nba was first the nba wasn't getting a lot of funding you know it wasn't you know what i mean again that was a lot of that probably mm -hmm. controlled by the media the media they spin everything what they feed us a lot of that shit is like program social engineering social program it's going on yeah for tv bro since before tv has been happening you know what i mean so Again, like we are the NBA, we are the athletes. We got to start figuring out how to be able to change the narrative where we control most of this because it makes no sense from the colleges down, bro. Institutions, institutions that are here, we don't control mm -hmm. any institutions that we frequent that take us to where we need to go as far as whether it's an athlete, an entrepreneur, owner, whatever, bro. You know what I'm saying? We don't even control these institutions that we frequent. That's another problem. So, you know what I mean, bro? Like, I, nah. I, me personally, I, I feel a way about a lot of these black media people. You know what I'm saying? Like, not all of them. Like, I feel like it's just tough, but I feel like Shannon Sharp do a good job. I give Shannon Sharp his plot. He does a pretty decent job. But Stephen A straddles the fence. He blows mine. And I, I hate the, you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to bash him, but he straddles the fence too much, bro. And he corny for that. And I, I'm sorry for even calling you names, but let's see what I'm doing now. That's what I have a problem with them doing. You can state your opinion without bashing them. And they do that shit all the time. And it drives me nuts. I understand you have to be objective in your, in what you're saying. But most of the times, most of y'all leaning towards, the other way together anyway so right now right. most yeah. of the towards Kyrie is being a distraction da, 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 da. you know what I'm saying I don't like that shit and um if you understand the bigger picture it's like again you trying to tell him he got to do whatever he does it's a way to do it you gotta do it da, da, da. shut the fuck up bro I, I, it bothers me. yeah I mean and that's my thing at some point in time you have to take the side brother like you know what I'm saying you know it, it, it is what it is and I understand that the position that he takes I understand the position that he took when he uh accepted that contract that he got with them. And, you know, I mean, it's clear, it's evident. When you look at the Bomani Jones of the world, when you look at, uh, you know, certain certain other figures on, on ESPN and all, um, other networks that have taken a certain stance and have taken a certain direction, when certain things have happened, you see what ESPN has done to them. I mean, I, I used to follow Stephen A. Smith and Jamel Hill on, Jamel Hill on Twitter, and it was comedy. <laughs> you know, it was comedy, you know. Jamel was constantly challenging Stephen A on certain issues, and you know, right. it was it, it, it was comedy. I will leave it at that. You know what I'm saying? But um, right. yeah, at some point in time, we got to pick a side, man. You know, we we understand what's going on, and it's hard to get up there in the media and always um, you know, I'm gonna call it what it is, shucking job, because at the end of the day, they use that against us. Yeah. You know, one person that comes out and says it's not that bad, or one person that comes out and challenges the you know, the particular athlete, you know, and takes the side of ownership, you know, they use that one segment, that one statement to say, oh, we found one. And that's all we need in order to re in order to keep the narrative going the same. Like um, uh, the quarterback from the Washington uh, football team, yeah, the old Redskins. That, yeah, that, that whole situation. I'm glad you, you know that up, bro. Yeah, right. He gets he gets cut. Now, we, I don't know the situation. I don't know the ins and outs of it. Um, Haskins, Dwayne Haskins. 
right. second year, first round, first round draft pick, you know, I believe top 10, if I'm not mistaken. On Mepic, I believe now you went like number 16 or 17. Nonetheless, first round draft pick, you know, you get drafted in the first round, quarterback, uh, you, your contract's guaranteed. It's normally about a four or five year deal. After two years, they they cut him. Right. Now, I don't know the ins and outs of the situation. Like I said, I haven't really been right. following. I'm, I'm a hardcore Giants fan, so I can give a good goddamn what happened to the rest to the, to the Washington football team. But one of the stances that was taken by uh, Booger McFarlane, um, a, a, another ex a ex football player, and I believe he's on. I'm not sure the network, but you know he's up there. You know, and he pretty much you know went at Dwayne Haskins. Right. You know, he pretty right. much. You know, went 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 directly at him and pretty much saying, you know, you you, it's a privilege to be able to play the sport and it's a privilege to be able to represent the shield and, you know, you got to honor that and you got to, you know, coming from the areas that we come from, you know, we got to accept that. I mean, and the, you know, you could go back and anybody take a look at it and go view it as just man. I don't even know. I don't even know how to word it at the moment. It's just. It just reeked of, you know, that old school mentality of, you know, that we got to come in there and we got to yes, sir, no, sir. And, you know, tuck everything to the you side and, and, and you conform. conform. Boom. You got to conform Boom. and be conservative, bro. Yeah. That's my Boom. There it is. Conform. When you conform, you, you start conforming, no matter how much you try to stay true to yourself, you're going to want to conform to conservative. You're going to take more than that yeah, man. because what they picture, what they put out or what they put out as which I'm like professionalism. They use that word. What's professional? What looks professional, right? What does that look like? Clean cut, suit and tie. Like, that's what professional is. Like I said, if I ran for office and I came and talked how I talk, dressed how I dress, which I don't dress too pretty, you know what I mean? I still mm-hmm. won't be looked at as professional because I don't, what they deemed as what's professional, what's um, leader worthy, what's has to fit and look a certain way, right? Which is bullshit. Like, and I got some people yeah. from my neighborhoods, like, what we deem as somebody that's our leader, what they look, besides the athletes and the, you know, I'm talking people that's local, like even the little pilot, the local councilmen and politicians, like just because they wear a suit and a tie don't mean shit, bro. I don't care if they don't curse. I don't care about any of that. You want somebody that you can look in the face and be like, I know him. He lived how I live. He came from where I came from. He was outside with us. Not he came from over here, but he stayed outside the whole time because his perception of reality is different because he was upstairs mm-hmm. looking down on us. He wasn't in the mm-hmm. church just going through what we went through. Not saying he might have missed a few meals, but he wasn't in the struggle because he was looking out his window judging. You know what I'm saying? He was that, it was that mom, no, stay out, at least stay away from those people. That, you know what I'm saying? That type of upbringing, not understand and learn these people and figure out a way to teach them different. You understand? So a lot of times, it, it, the, the way and what we perceive as successful and like I said, professional and as a leader or a politician is what they made up. You know what I'm saying? It's what they present as, as in it's, it's a big back on what you said about that, the, the, the commentator, ex football player, I seen that he had a few segments and he was just like, Yeah, you know, Booger McFarlane. Yeah. OS, OS. And one of the other dudes came at him too. I forgot his name, the younger brother, which is dope. The younger one, because he's older. He was like, uh-huh. um, He was he basically what you said. He was like, um, Yeah, you know, as black men, we got to do better. We got an opportunity. Was it we Randy Moss? Was it Randy? It, it, it was, it, it wasn't, it wasn't Randy. It was another one that looked like Randy. The, the one with the like, I know, the, no, not like I, 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 I know the segment that I, I mean, I know the, the cast that be up there, so I'm trying to think. It wasn't, no, it wasn't, it wasn't Randy. It was another, it was another show, but he just referenced oh, back. Oh, to, right. He's yeah. like, I'm tired of people always trying to, you know, when a black quarterback, you know, I'm not defending his actions, right? Whatever, he made a mistake. Right. How many white quarterbacks was taken in the first round, and you didn't see other white people come oh, out and be man. like, yo, as white people, gotta look better. As white people, we gotta show Ben, ben, ben Roethlisberger had about a, about a good, you know what I'm saying, handful of um accusations, you know what I'm saying, about you know that involved sexual assault, and we're even talking about, you know, I mean, it, they're not because they're not minors, you know what I'm saying, based on the law, uh, letter of the law, but this dude was, you know, a 30 year old hanging out around college campuses and messing with girls on college campuses. This was a known thing. He got. He got an actual suspension from the NFL because of that. So I mean, like you said, uh, you know, I don't. We don't know the ins and outs of what happened. I didn't. I still haven't really heard too much about the ins and outs of what happened with Dwayne. But for Booger to take that stance immediately, immediately was kind of, you know, it was heart wrenching, man. Because we're still doing that to each other. We're still, we're still pulling each other down. Or I don't even know if it's it's us doing the pulling. It's like we're helping keep down. You yep. know what I'm saying? Like we're we're getting pulled down from another from another faction, but then you know you you also got you also have your knee on our back. You know what I'm saying? Preventing us from from being able to get up out of that grass, man. And that's that's a tough thing. You know, I just didn't like the fact that he took 
that particular stance so fast, you know, without, like I said, I mean, I haven't heard any real facts. I don't, I don't well, believe that, he stated I, any real facts. I, 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 you know what I'm saying? That, so, you he, know what? Like, we don't, we still don't even know what, what, what he did or what the initial issue was. You know, like, we're he just hearing about a mass party in a few times, whatever. My thing yeah, is, just talking about conduct. We're talking you, about, you know, if you really feel how you felt as a black man, why not? I guarantee you, you didn't have that conversation with he that. You didn't man. reach out with him. You yeah, there you have it. He didn't reach out to that man. You tried to hold him accountable on national TV in front of everybody else, and that's what we do. And I'm tired of it. And they you and they use those segments. Yep, and they to use say, that see, and bites. See, it's not just you know. I'm saying, yeah. I mean, yep. could you imagine a Caucasian sitting behind the the desk and saying, "See, it's not us." Yep. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Exactly. They don't like them either. You know, exactly. so I mean, we get that power, and I like, and I've said that a million different times. I mean, a lot of us. We're quicker to pull each other down than, um, you know, other entities and other ethnicities. You know, we don't. We, you know, they'll they'll come together and protect before, or they'll stay silent. How about that? Yep, I mean, take a, take a look at the nation. Take a look at what happened just a week ago. Okay. Right? If 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 you know the ones that didn't agree with it too much, but they they're still on that side. They, Bro, I tell people they, all the time. They, they're gonna stay silent. You know, they're not gonna they're not gonna speak on it and say, hey, you know. Now, granted, there are some that have come out and denounced. But for the most part, man, you got a lot of people that's going to stay quiet about that. Absolutely. We worried about everybody we see on TV marching. I'm like, y'all worried about them? Uh, y'all worried about that? You worry about the ones that's at home that just funded all that, paid for the rides out there, gave them the guns, the water, the fuel, whatever else they went out there with, gave them the okay, the nod. They endorsed them, yeah. Those are the ones, the endorsers, you know what I'm saying? The ones that sit back and we think those are the ones, bro. And, mm -hmm. and not only the endorsers, the complicit bystanders – and I'm talking about the Democrats because they are complicit and they Boston and like they ain't know that shit's about to happen, bro. I'm sorry, bro. Like it's it's like you know what I'm saying. So and again, I'm not even gonna go that deep into this in this segment, but I'm just saying like we worried about the people that was actually there doing all that. What about the ones that with the with the real money and power? Because what's the power with the real money and power was not out there. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely, Probably absolutely. People, you could relate it to the I mean in the hood. The G, you know what I'm saying the shot call never gonna be outside doing that ever. He might get the mm -hmm. okay, but have funded it. You know what I mean, because it's part of his agenda, but he ain't gonna be out there on front street, he ain't gonna comment on it. But it's definitely part of his agenda. You know what I'm saying? And the same people that we watch on TV, like their music, listen to their songs, you know what I'm saying? Like it is you know what I'm saying. So like we gotta tap in, man. We gotta we gotta tap all the way in, man. But I'm glad you bring that up about the Dwayne Haskins thing, because that definitely I was like, yo, well, we gotta do better, bro. We always wanna hold us accountable on national team for all these other folks. That's a conversation for us to have because they did the same thing with Ray Rice. Right when he, but even though he was all the way wrong, but that shit wound up being like a, that was that that was the intro to TMZ show for a whole year. That said him punching her on the floor and her falling. Like why did they did that? You know what I mean? F Harvey, whatever his name is. Yeah. After that, I don't feel with Harvey Weinstein, whatever this Jewish cat name is. I don't know. Yeah, you gotta watch. Yo, know, he's a funny guy. But I don't I don't jack him, bro. And we have a whole segment about that relationship with them too. But anyway, you gotta watch. You gotta you know what I'm saying you gotta watch people, but that was a situation I didn't I didn't really I really didn't dig that he made that the sound bite for because it's wrong. Like so I'm not justifying what he did, but how dare you? How dare you? The, the why you didn't get the the, the kick of Josh Brown? Yo, why you ain't post a diary that he kept he kept a diary of the beatings he did to his wife? He kept not even yeah, and how about how about this? I'm a Giants fan. <laughs> you know, they'll probably, you know, if they ever see this, they might not let me into the stadium, but you know, I'm a Giants fan and um you know, that was a clear case of they tried to keep that in house. You know, yep. they knew everything that was going on. They knew what was happening. Like he had a and, problem. Um, this was continuously happening. Yeah, like, man. That was, like, that that was very bad. They had a, that was not, very bad. And it, it came situation. right after it came Homie right after the Ray it. Rice situation. Homie was doing this forever. Like, you know what I mean? I'm like, and again, maybe Ray Rice had part previous history. It, it, you don't it know came that. after and the I, Ray Rice situation. The Giants, I mean, the Giants, I'm going to call it what it is. You know, they, they, have, they have a race issue. Yep. Of course, <laughs> you bro. know what I'm saying? The Come Giants on. have a race issue. I mean, when the Colin Kaepernick situation was going on, they were one of the the ownerships that wouldn't give him a shot, and um, yep. you know, and voted against you know his reinstatement. Yep. You know, they they didn't stand for that. Uh, you didn't really see too many of the the NFL the, the Giants players, you know, kneeling and doing anything um in solidarity or whatever the case may be. That uh, we you know that wasn't that wasn't what we were we, we, what we were about on our side. Uh, so yeah, we have some issues, man, and you can see the uh, the disparities that we have in I mean in race in general, but just you know it's all over the place. It's a great sports segment to have because you know we have those issues, man. It's protect Kyrie, it's protect all of our leaders within the leaders. Absolutely, we have we have people in leaders doing 
you know, that leadership role. And then we have guys that are really understanding, you know, what this, what the, uh, what the climate is, you know, what the temperature is at this moment. And they're adhering to it. And shout out to those brothers that do that, you know, shout out to the Colin Kaepernick's shout out to Kyrie Irving, you know, shout out to LeBron, shout out to everybody, shout out to all of them. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I can't name everybody at the moment. Malcolm Brown, uh, Malcolm Jenkins, excuse me, Malcolm Jenkins. Yeah, Malcolm Jenkins. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Shout out, shout out to all those good brothers that really do take those stands and, you know, they're always on code. They don't have to ask them. You don't have to go seek them out. They're always there. You know what I'm saying? And they're always speaking on it, you know, and definitely, uh, you know, protect our athletes, man. Protect Kyrie. You know what I mean? That's the, that's the label that's of this Kyrie. one right here. I'm protect Kyrie, man. Oh, boys, I want to make fun of he's, him. Yeah, he's the next one, man. God. Good vibes only. Yes, that's why yes, say he's got good vibes. He's the only one, but he on, he's on code. He's on time. He's tapped in. He understands it. He understands mm-hmm. it. Man. And quick too, man. Quick, fast in the hurry, man. Equip your minds, equip your homes, and apply it. I say it all the That's time. That's a fact. Homes, equip your minds, apply it. You know what I'm saying? That's a fact. Power, baby. We gotta get in tune and stop. And stop. shout out to JJ Watt too, man. I don't want to, you know what I'm saying? Because there's a lot of there's a lot of people that are on the other side of the coin. It is, you're right, bro. That, you know what I'm saying? That's still so. And he's one of the main ones that he's been consistent. You know what I'm saying? He's been very consistent. I'm pretty sure, like, like there's a lot of others too. But he's one of the main ones that I'm always seeing with what's going on in Houston. You know what I'm saying? What's he's in the trenches, man. He's in the field. Shout out JJ. I believe absolutely. I definitely 100 percent I agree with you on that one, man. I definitely agree with you on that one, man. Like I said, I, I, I like that because he'll put it. You know I mean, I, I always say, you know how somebody really their ally, a white person, right? Or anybody else that's you know how they ally when they use their privilege for your benefit. If they're willing to use well said. Their privilege for your benefit, oh, you're my guy. We rock. You know what I'm saying? Well said. Well you said. Privilege for my benefit. Well said. It could be individually or as a whole, but if you come in, you my man's, and it's, it's and if it's something that I need individually, cool. But I'm always gonna say I need to be for my people because if you rocking with me, you gotta rock with them. If you don't rock with them, you don't rock with me. You're not it. You know what I'm saying? You're not for us. So I always say that, man. You gotta use your privilege. But um, you already know, man. Questions, concerns, man. Y'all gotta tap in, subscribe, all that good stuff. Yes, man. sir. Yes, sir. I already know, man. We come with a lot Shout of Shout out to our first athletic episode. You feel absolutely, me? Absolutely, absolutely. Got a lot of good content coming, man. Questions, concerns, comments, tap in. You already know Militant Nerd. Yes, sir. Back to my roots. If not us, then who? You already know, bro. Yes, sir. Bangin' as you poppin' as you turned up The dope money keep the cush wrapped and burnt up Your hot boy bullets bustin' out your brand shit Your gang bangin' if you know it got your family sick And what's your life about to